Australia in desperate trouble at the start of the fourth day of this uh, fifth test match at Old Trafford. That was the good news for all England supporters packing the ground here. Another capacity crowd. They closed the gates one of the days. Yesterday, they packed it out to watch both of them. And today, the spectators were in for the kill. England, a lead of 446 when play began in marvellous conditions. Few clouds around, but really, it was just about the best day you could imagine for cricket. Perfect blue sky and the pitch playing nice and evenly. England starting off with that lead of 446. Here's the second over of the morning now. Dennis Lilly is coming into bowl. Alan Knott is taking strike. There's one run added to take the lead to 447. And uh, in the commentary box with me is Peter Parfitt. Dirk Willem is beaten, but Whitney's not. Nice save there by the young player in his first test match. First run of the morning for Alan Knott goes to 57, 28 to Embry, 347 for seven. The reason Dennis Lilly has switched from the Warwick Road end to the Stratford end is shown in those flags there. Quite a stiff breeze now. I had the feeling he was running up into it from the Warwick Road end. And as you look at your screen now with Lilly going away from us, the breeze is uh, going from left to right and is slightly behind his left shoulder. Good shot, and that's four runs. That's fine blow from uh, Embry. Goes to 33. That's a really good shot from uh, what was a rather loose delivery. This is a textbook back foot shot by John Embry, and he hits the ball very crisply past Doug Wellen at cover point for four runs, who has fielded very well this innings. What a marvellous catch that is. <laughs> you won't see a better one than that. Johnny Dyson, way down there at third man, has taken a sensational catch to get rid of Alan Knott. Almost took one yesterday to grab Ian Botham's wicket, but couldn't quite hang on to it. And today, that was a great piece of feeling. 356 for eight now. The lead is 457, two wickets in hand. And not is caught Dyson Bowl Lily for 59. Good shot. Beautifully timed in good position. off the mark and a very relieved cheer from all his fans around this old Trafford ground and uh, I'm not sure if he's got a column in the paper this morning but Mike Brady obviously able to relax up there on the balcony did it to Embry and that's a lovely shot by John Embry and he's now equaled his highest test score Nicely played strokes by Alan. Everything right about it. Weight in the right place. Head over the ball. Oh, and that's uh, very leisurely, easily pushed off his thighs there by Alan. Uh, coming back for the third. And Whitney there in some doubt which end to throw at, so he plopped it in the middle of the wicket. Well, 
gets it. He's squeezed it away through the slips. Don't think they'll worry about a second. They'll be uh, gratified enough to take the one. Up will go the bat. There it is. 50 runs for John Embury for the first time in a test match. That's a fine shot. Only person in danger there was Paul Allett. And uh, what a joy to see a batsman use his feet. A good, lofted, perfectly safe shot. And here he comes, down the wicket. Good foot movement. And a very good strike. Nearly got his partner. Well, now let's come a long way down. Oh, and he couldn't gather the ball. Well, the Australians who've done everything in the field so very brilliantly here, yeah, missing a very, very obvious opportunity there with Bright unable to gather that return. Well, it's 50-50, this. It wasn't a terribly good throw. Very difficult for Ray Bright to take. at the second attempt Martin Kent two good catches he's taken caught one yesterday and has picked up John Embry there to make it 396-49 and he's given it uh, the leg glance before. Four hundred up for England. Yeah, Hughes catches it. That's the end of the innings. And the Australians bat immediately after lunch. 505 is the lead for England. Just for your records, for Australia to make that to win in the fourth innings will establish a new record in Test Match cricket. And the match situation at lunch. England 231 and 404, Australia 130 and 506 needed to win. Here's the first over now. It's the second ball, and Bob Willis has been given the new ball. He's coming into bowl to John Dyson, and in the commentary box, Peter Parfitt and Christopher Martin Jenkins. run back and uh, almost falling over over himself there but uh, he's in a happy frame of mind I'm sure he'll do a lot of bowling in this innings unless the fast bowlers break through again and that's going to go all the way for four no third man so the runs material at this stage and <laughs> there is Kim Hughes reading about what he should have done yesterday perhaps he looks very absorbed in it isn't he almost as though he can't bear to look over the top of that paper It's got to be quick, there must be a run out. Oh dear, what a disaster for Australia.
push forward there by John Dyson. He sets off straight away and, in fact, is drawn up the wicket a little bit by Graham Wood and is sent back very late. And there wasn't a run there. Gower, one of the quickest people in the game at, at cover point, and at no stage could he get back to his ground. Well, this again. Well, that was not the sort of shot one would expect uh, Kim Hughes to play at this stage of such a crucial innings. It really was a rather airy-fairy sort of stroke. He's got four runs for it. Yes, bowl short by Bob Willis. Not a good shot by Kim Hughes. He didn't really get behind the ball at all, and it went over the slips for four runs because at this stage of the innings, there's no third man. It was a superb catch by Alan Knott. It really was very low, and he made it look so easy. The ball goes down the leg side. Graham Wood gets himself into a position to hit the ball, swings at it, and Alan Knott gets across very quickly and catches it two hands. Oh, cracking stroke. Hughes has been uh, notching runs very steadily in that direction. He's had Gower back at third man to save uh, the boundary after it put two away down there, but now he's added a third and taken his side onto the 50 mark. Well, with rings of uh, close catches, very few people out, runs have come at a brisk rate again. 52 for two coming up in the 13th over. runs uh, to play with of course they can afford to do without a third man nobody back there and Allot again to Hughes that's another good looking shot half folly legs down clipped nicely through mid wicket boycott having a long chase going to give it best and successive boundaries now to the Australian skipper Again, that's a good shot. Once again, plenty of evidence there of the lack of pace in this pitch. Yellow up all the time in the world to get nicely in position and uh, just tuck it away off the back foot for two more runs. Yes, in fact, he hits it on the up, which is an indication that the pace has gone out of the wicket and things are becoming nice and gentle. And again, all the time in the world to hook that away, drop short, and yell up nicely into position. He collects four more, total going on to 65, and yell up now into the 20s. Hughes facing Willis. And uh, he's cracked that through mid wicket before to drop short. Beautiful shot. And uh, surely Bob Willis will see now that this isn't really a wicket for dropping him halfway down. That's short. And again, it's been put away by Graham Yallop, who's really enjoying this knock now. He's uh, overhauled Kim Hughes, and Kim Hughes, a fine stroke player in his own right. And that's followed it in glorious style. That really is a cracking extra cover drive. Overpitched by Allert and really hammered away in both on style there. And 
That's another nicely timed shot from Hughes. Just make two out of it. So those two runs bring up the 100 for Australia, and it's come in remarkably good time. So many adrift, needing over 500 to win, but they've pushed the 100 up in uh, just 18 overs. Didn't quite get that. Got it well enough for three runs. Lisa Fielding there, nice piece of throwing from Mike Gatting and a half century to Graham Yallop. And that's a very good innings. I'd just about give that as a chance, I think. It uh, darted alarmingly off the seam and went very, very quickly past Brealey's right hand. Good piece of bowling, this. Just left Kim Hughes. Edge and just about carried. Very difficult, low down to the right. It's not far away. This is given Hughes out of W. OBW to both of them, and Hughes must have been in line with the stumps there because he was certainly playing a stroke. And there's that dismissal again. The left foot comes forward. Well, there we are. That's um, LBW to Ian Botham, 119 for three. And that's a fine stroke to get Alan Border off the mark. He's batting with a broken hand. And that's a good shot. It's hit uh, time quite sweetly again by Yellow. He's really middling this ball nicely. He just pulled the man in from that uh, long on boundary. And Yellow picking his spot goes on now to 76. again that's oh, hoisted away through uh, mid-wicket good shot very safe sound going on in a uh, really excellent vein here Graham Yellup goes into the 80s now so both of them taking over from Willis straight for them and Alan Border Not in any way respecting the danger that both of them have so often presented in this series, it's making him away for four for square leg. Allot to Yallop. What a fine shot. And he helped that from outside the off stump, and Yallop really has uh, looked the part today. Last ball of Ellard's over, burning to Yallop. Oh, and Chris Tavery, one of the safest slip fielders in the country. Not quite grasping that with his right hand, and an escape for Graham Yallop at 89. And a reassuring pat on the back, but a very disappointed Tavery. Yes. The ball that moves slightly away from Yallop, he gets the outside edge, and Chris Tavare, moving to his right, fails to hold a catch he should have caught. How often I've seen this before, at a time when nothing seems to be going on, and the game is quietly going on, and the chances offered, and how often I've seen it missed. And while Ian Botham gets ready to prepare the bowl again after the drinks interval that young man behind the stumps there 
is his elder child, Liam Botham. And those pads come up somewhere near his tummy. As you can see, he's a bit immobile. But any moment now, if he gets the bat in his hand, we may well see the ball flying over into the main arena. Botham to Yellow, still needing three for his hundred. And that could well be it, it is. A hook to square leg gives Graham Yellop his third test hundred against England. A triumph for him after what has been a disappointing tour. He certainly wasn't a sel certain selection for this test match. And Alan to bowl to him. And another splendid stroke straight back down the ground. Very hard indeed. And when Graham Yellop drives the ball, he really shows the full face back to the bowler. And another one. Two really resounding straight drives in this over. done him bowled him Gallup trying to hit away over mid wicket and that's a sad loss of concentration after reaching the hundred They've a lack of concentration shot in the last over against both them and Embry now has broken through bowling Gallup for 114 198 for four six wickets to go for England Australia still needs 308 Helmet, I would say, which uh, from the way he got up is probably a plus mark for the helmets. And really, this didn't bounce at all. Ian banged it in, and you see, it just didn't bounce. And it's 198 for four now, with uh, Graham Yell up the man out for 114. Both of them is bowling to border. Yeah, the fielder away at cover point. Two to border takes him on to 22. Martin Kent is the new batsman. It's not yet off the mark. This has been an eventful over with uh, the 200 coming up now for the loss of four wickets for Australia. 306 required. And both of them already this over has uh, cracked border on the helmet with a bouncer. Oh, well done. That's well bowled. It looked to me as though it was the curving off spinner, which was out moved in the air. Just four more added to that Australian total after Kent's dismissal to take it along to 210 for five. Wood out for six, a weak shot that one, and Dyson run out for five, an even weaker run out between the opening pair. I just can't imagine how any fella could get run out needing 506 to win in the fourth innings. I can only believe that uh, there's some bizarre reason, like uh, they thought they were behind the clock at that stage of the innings. Kim Hughes batted very well today, 43, and Yallop, a splendid innings, that. That's just about the best innings I've seen from Graham Yallop in Test cricket, innings of skill and courage and temperament. He can be very proud of that effort, and so too can Alan Border, batting uh, with a fracture of uh, the left hand. He's 28 not out and fighting away there, and uh, Rodney Marsh is with him on two. Martin Kent was dismissed there towards the end, caught Brearley bowl Embry for two. And uh, it was a good day then for Brearley because uh, a little earlier it had been announced that uh, he was going to captain England in uh, the final Cornhill Test match at the Oval. Beautiful strip. And he's done it. 